question is, do we inherit the punishment of sins made by, by our loved ones? Is there such a concept of generational curse? I think uh, you have to get the timeless reality. <laughs> it was in timeless reality. I think these were the questions on the, the jinn nations and the child inherits the sins of the father. That's one of the nice dressings that the parents give. It's carried on to them and inherited on to the child. That's one, so those difficulties and what the father did then is dressed upon the child. And that's why you have to know the father by… the child by his father, right? So that you identify who this child is before you adopt them. Who is the father of this because that father if he was in difficulty and did bad things, that child is, a, is inheriting that badness and that difficulty. And the, the sins and the grave sins, the horrific sins, they don't go away, they don't just vanish because the person left. They're moving towards the, the families and the recipients. So it's not only cash that people get from people when they die but you take their burdens and their sins and what they've done on this earth. Then the understanding again of the unseen nations, their life is 1000, 2000, 3000 years. If you should harm them, their fight with you could be hundreds of generations because we live 60 years, 70, 80 years. Ten generations is not even 800 years. So you can see how that one is still alive and he's still angry. So just keep coming, keep coming and that's why you see many families with many difficulties that just seem to pass from generation to generation. But for that unseen world that was uh, not even a lifetime for them. So yes, those are… those are understood realities and they can be altered by Allah guiding. And that's when we say there's immense blessings when Allah wants to guide a servant. If He wants to guide the servant and break the difficulty of that inheritance, He guides them to the hands of awliyaullah. And by means of that guidance then they can intercede to block that damage and that difficulty. And that's a najat from Allah to that child and to all the descendants. When Allah guides that child, if they had gener generational difficulties coming to them, just imagine then the haqqaiq and the rahmah of Allah Because as soon as He guides the child, they immediately intercede with this love and this ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad And it's all Qur'an because Allah says, I would never punish them while you are amongst them and they're asking for forgiveness. So when you are with a Muhammadiyoon, you are in the light of Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam's presence. Means then when they took the hand of the shaykh, the Muhammadan dress is now around that servant. As a result they're teaching them, make tawbah and istighfar, make lots of salawats so that this ayatul kareem begin to dress and intercede for you. So you see how the teaching always goes back to Allah, it's Allah through the guidance Allah wants a system in which to bring them back. Now the Qur'an will intercede for you because you're with the Muhammadiyoon and you're making your istighfar. Now the Qur'an is activated upon you and it begin to intercede from Ayatul Kareem that your punishment stops. As a result of your punishment stopping what happens? All your hasana begins to dress your father. Right? Because the amal of a child is brought up by the angels and the angels say, who is his abu? Is who is his father? So that the dress of his actions now dresses his father and relieves him from any difficulty within the grave or any accounts that he's having within the heavens, inshaAllah. Uh, As-salamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As-salamu 
How does a seeker progress in spiritual path when the student gets spiritually intoxicated and is unable to stay in senses? <clears throat> if you follow their disciplines with the madad and the support, because remember there's always a level of disclaimer because you're… we're asking general questions and everything's not a, a general understanding. You have to follow the system of their taweez, uh, their madad, everything that they describe and all along following sharia, following all of that is already a given. You follow Allah's commands and on top of it you're following the guidance of the shaykhs, you wash, you make your… you have your taweez, you learn how to do your madad. <clears throat> At that level the shaykhs block those types of fayas and those types of hal that are uncontrolled. Naqshbandiyat al-aliyah that if you're under another tariqah and you're experiencing all sorts of things, as soon as you take bayah with us, Mawlana Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Daghestani will cut all your connections. They don't like that, they don't operate with that. So that from their end they'll immediately cut all the circuits that are opened and incorrectly opened or inappropriately opened so that the student is not experiencing those things. But why we mention the taweezes, the zikrs, the washings, the madad is that they're not under the influence of again jinn which could be giving them the false illusions, false hallucinations, false feelings of, of achievement. And usually you see those people who their amal is very bad and they complain, they talk about having lots of experiences. That's all from the jinn because the jinn are not doing a security check on you and they just let you to see and experience anything you want to misguide you. The shaykhs they have to follow through the command of Sayyidina Muhammad that all your amal has to be check, 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 check like a government screening. If you try to get a job at the government they're going to come and do seven years of background checks with you. You think the agencies hire you and say, come here's your security card and go now through our offices do what you want. They do seven years, they go through all your relatives and ask every question of where you work, what you did, what you earned. All as if it does much more thorough than that. So it means they have to have a complete check, background, everything for Prophet to sign off. But the jinn are not doing that. They can give anybody a hal, anything an experience. We said that the most possessed part of a human body is their head. So anyone whom is thinking they hear something but they don't have those types of trainings that they've described, that they're seeing something, that they're understanding something, then there's a likelihood that there's a jinn interference in them to make them feel that they've achieved something. Because the achievement we just described is immense fire, immense difficulty, immense testing, security checks on your character, character, character so that the character is good and as a result then the heart begins to open. But shaitan is standing right on the side saying, I'll open it for free, don't worry. But what he'll open is the hallucination with their head. He has no access into the heart and eternity. So then they'll accept the hallucination of the head until they reach to the punishment of the grave. Where Allah says, you had opened your head, you allowed the shaitans to play with you and give you your hallucinations and now the difficulty you face from that reality. But those whom Allah opened their hearts means their security checks were done and as a result the grave becomes the conclusion of their khalwa and their achievement when Allah at that time grants them to complete their ahad. I'm going to for this day complete my covenant upon you and finish the dress that I had promised you. That you weren't allowed to open on earth, I'll open in your qabr. So there's nothing to do with punishment anymore, this is a servant whom Allah has already authorized then he completes his ni'mat upon them in the grave. So these are, are, are very complicated issues because many people may be listening and watching. So that's why it always goes to the foundation. The foundation is that you're connecting, you're wearing your taweez and you're doing your muraqabah. In your muraqabah you have to have a very strong connection with the shaykhs. 
and you don't look for any other connection, just the shaykhs, the shaykhs, the shaykhs, so that they can connect you to that source of power. And we talked earlier today that this whole understanding of the jinn world was based on humans not knowing their real strength. But shaitan knows how strong humans are. So they become powerful by your worshipping. So when the jinns wanted to become more powerful they got the humans to worship them. As a result of your unknown power you would put it on to them and they became more powerful. So if their power was this big when you worshipped them they became this big and you shrunk in your reality. So it means that many, many realities of what they're trying to do and impose upon human beings. But when Allah wants the perfected connection is that focus on Allah focus on Sayyidina Muhammad make your connections with the shaykhs so that they take you to the sultanat of Sayyidina Muhammad And that that's why we start the zikr that see ourselves at Rawdha Sharif it's the sultanat. And then we talked about something else too is that people say that if I know the name of this angel or I know the name of this jinn, should I call them or should I do this? I say, I'll give you example that if you're sitting in the presence of that king, do you think any of his commanders would come to your rescue if you called them directly? Impossible for any one of them to move. You call on all the angels you want and if they're sitting in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and you have a different telephone line, hey can you come and guard my village we're under attack, not one will move. Because of why? They're from an ocean of discipline, they only take their command from their king. That's why when you watch the movies of dynasties and kings you understand that your request has to go to the king. Has to be to Allah Almighty but to his sultanate of Sayyidina Muhammad only then will madad and support be dispatched. So you don't need to know everybody's name, you don't need to know the name of this angel, the name of this jinn, the name of this, the name of that. You need to know that you have to be connected to the king, you have to be connected to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Ya Rabbi by the haqqaiq and the reality that you're dressed upon Sayyidina Muhammad that look upon me, guide upon me, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem, send this madad and support, the send this of this difficulty coming to me, send support. So this whole concept of madad, of madad, of madad is to show our connection to this kingdom. So when all day long you've practiced your madad, you're with the shaykhs, you've visualized the shaykhs, you feel the presence that they're in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad you're part of that kingdom. What do you have to ask for? The king already sees it. Ayatul Kursi describes the power of Sayyidina Muhammad Neither sleep nor slumber overtakes him, this king sees everything the Sultanat of Sayyidina Muhammad when you're connected, you're connected to his awliya, you're connected to his sahabi, you're connected to his family and most supreme you have immense love for his holy presence and Allah as a result loves you, why you have to call on anything? You just keep making your connection, they're guarding these areas. They see what you don't see and they dispatch the support that's needed all around you, your home, your family and your communities. But you want to call individual person and say, hey will you dispatch an army to come and help me? So who are you? We don't operate like that, we operate from an order. Under tawheed order come from Allah to Sayyidina Muhammad and then out to all the ulul am. This we described in Surat Al-Qadr. The amr has to come in a chain, so in our lives is the same way. No need to keep emailing if I call here, call that, call this, no. That you just make your connection to the shaykh. If you made the connection to that shaykh, you're hearing their teachings, you're making your heart connected, they're connecting you now to this ishq and this love of Sayyidina Muhammad and that all times you're seeing yourself at Rosa Sharif, 
You don't even have to see it and say, my heart I can't see it yet, you don't have to. You just have to know you're there and that you're holding the, the Rosa Sharif and that you're asking Sayyidina Muhammad that your nazar be upon me, your dress be upon me, that your gaze be upon me and that's it, that's enough. If we do that with love, قُلْ إِنِي كُنْتُمْ Allah fattabiyuni. This is the secret of fattabiyuni, يُهِبُكُمْ Allah. If you're doing it right and you're feeling this ishq and you're feeling this love, you feel that fire of testing and burning and only through when you're burning you know that you're close to Prophet because only one who can bring a coolness to your tears. If you're not burning you don't really know who Prophet is. That's why he said that Medina is for the broken hearted not happy people. Those whom been tested by Prophet severely, they feel the joy and the immense love of entering into Medina to Munawwara because they know they've been tested and they're going into the presence of Rasul Kareem who relieves all sadness from their heart, all difficulties from their heart, make all their tears to be something cool and peaceful and beautific, to get their, their realities and their blessings from that reality. So that happens in every salawat, every majlis of salawat the Nabi is to make everything to be cool and peaceful through the difficulty of this world. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamu ala al-mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Illa sharifa Nabi wa nusafi kiram wa ala min shaykhina fi tariqatun ashbandiyatul aliyya wa sa'ilu sadatina siddiqina al-fatiha. Assalamu alaykum.